everyone. Welcome to the webinar today. My name is Jessica Moraz. I'm the Communications Specialist for New Mexico Main Street. We're very happy that you're able to join us today to talk about key partnerships and your business mix. Uh, just a few housekeeping items. This webinar will be recorded. I will be sending you all a follow-up email with the recording link, and so you can view that at a later time. We will be taking questions at the end of the presentation. You should see a questions uh, toolbox on the right-hand side. You can type your questions in there, and then we will answer those at the end. You should also see a handouts tool on the right-hand side, and you can download the PDF of this presentation and follow along if you like. Um, so I want to talk about New Mexico Main Street for a minute here. Uh, New Mexico Main Street is a program of the Economic Development Department. Uh, we, our mission is downtown revitalization and redevelopment. On the map, you can see all the, diff the districts across the state where we are represented. You can learn more about New Mexico Main Street at nmmainstreet.org. You can learn more about the New Mexico Economic Development Department at gonm.biz. This webinar series is an initiative of the Economic Development Department to help small businesses and communities through the current crisis. Another initiative of the Economic Development is by NM Local, by nmlocal.org. Um, you can register your business there and buy local products there as well. So this slide shows you a, a, a list of upcoming webinars. Uh, so we have several webinars scheduled and you can register for all of those on our website, nmmainstreet.org. I just want to give a quick plug for this, the census. It's really important that you complete your census and encourage your colleagues to complete it as well. You can learn more about the census at icountnm.gov. Now, I just want to introduce our panelists really briefly. Uh, Sean O'Shea is our Business and Entrepreneur Development Revitalization Specialist. Sean is an entrepreneur and economic development professional who has assisted dozens of startups and entrepreneurs through his work at the Santa Fe Business Incubator. He's currently the founder and president of Hatchform, an economic development consulting firm located in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Your other panelist is Michelle Negret. Uh, she is the Creative Economy and Cultural Planning Revitalization Specialist. For over 20 years, Michelle has focused on creative economic revitalization and redevelopment work in communities across the state. She served as a Main Street board member and has worked with New Mexico Main Street districts for the last two decades. She is a registered architect and planner and is the principal of Strata Design. So I'm gonna turn it over to Sean now. Great, thank you very much. Um, welcome to the webinar. Um, today's webinar is about key partnerships and your business mix. Uh, today we will primarily be using the term key partnerships or key partners uh, as they're defined in the book, uh, The Business Model Generation, uh, which is the relationships that businesses have with other businesses, governments, or non-consumer entities that help the business model work. Uh, the business mix is the collection of business types, industries, categories that are represented in a given geographic area. So it could be a state, uh, county, neighborhood, main street district, uh, or street. Uh, and as uh, Jesse said, my name is Sean O'Shea, uh, and my company Hatchform is a consulting firm that works with economic development organizations, and I am a revitalization specialist uh, in economic vitality with the New Mexico Main Street program. Um, and we're gonna start off with a quote from Steve Jobs uh, about the Beatles. Um, and the most important takeaway from this quote is that the total uh, was greater than the sum of its parts. Uh, and that's what he was trying to get at with the Beatles, that their music was greater as a whole than it could have been uh, if they were doing it individually. And great partnerships are the same way in that they achieve things that are beyond what the individual actors could have accomplished on their own. And that's why businesses enter into partnerships um, and why they are so important, especially at this time of crisis. Uh, so we'll quickly go through the types of partnerships and uh, companies forge partnerships for many reasons, 
um, and it is becoming a cornerstone of many business models, uh, again, especially now uh, in times of crisis when businesses are looking to really quickly um, pivot uh, and reconfigure their models to accommodate uh, current conditions on the ground. Uh, and mostly it is to optimize business models, uh, reduce risk, um, acquire uh, resources, um, and then the four major types of partnerships are strategic alliances between non-competitors, and this is what most people, I think, would uh, immediately comes to their mind when they think of partnerships are alliances between non-competitors. Uh, Coopetition, uh, which are strategic partnerships between competitors, um, which are maybe a little less uh, likely, a little less prevalent, but still very important. Uh, and two other ones that we won't talk about very much during this webinar are joint ventures, uh, which are uh, two companies coming together to form a new entity or develop a new business line, and uh, buyer-supplier relationships um, to assure reliable supplies or to make sure that they get their resources and inventory um, when they need it. Uh, another type of partnership that I thought was important to mention is a cooperative. Uh, which is when a business is owned or jointly run by its members. Uh, and these members do this because they share in the profits or benefits uh, of the company. Um, and we're all fairly familiar with co cooperatives, mostly in cooperative grocery stores or markets, uh, or REI is a cooperative. So many people are familiar with cooperatives through that model. Um, there's basically four of them as well. And this is, these are very broad. Um, consumer, which is owned by the consumers who buy the goods or services, which is probably the most uh, popular type or one that we would be most familiar with. Uh, the other uh, large one is producer, producers of commodities or crafts. So um, farmers enter into cooperatives uh, who produce grain or corn or other sorts of commodities. Um, worker owned that are uh, owned and democratically governed by the employees uh, who are members of the co-op, so they collectively own the company. Um, and then purchasing, which is uh, independent businesses or governments sometimes uh, use this to improve their purchasing power. They come together jointly to improve purchasing powers. So uh, we'll start off talking about strategic alliances, uh, which is why do small businesses um, get into strategic alliances. And uh, mostly it's because they can quickly and inexpensively ramp up their access to technology, expertise, marketing, distribution, uh, all the capabilities that are necessary to run and sustain your business. Um, and the, an important takeaway from this is that there are studies, and this is, uh, there are, there's a resource list at the end of the presentation, that businesses who participate in alliances uh, grow faster and they increase productivity faster, and they report higher revenues than abstainers and those businesses that uh, don't enter into partnerships or who uh, wish not to uh, engage in uh, partnerships between uh, businesses. So synergy um, is the collaboration between businesses that complement one another in the hope of a mutually beneficial result. Uh, and we're all very familiar with this idea of synergistic business relationships because we see it all the time. We just don't, we just may not necessarily identify it as being a synergistic business partnership. Uh, and we'll go through some examples of this. Uh, the first one is a brewery and a food truck. And uh, I would imagine that most of us who've been to breweries who don't serve food have seen that they have a food truck in their parking lot. Uh, and this is because it is very mutually beneficial for patrons at the brew pub to be able to get something to eat. Um, and so it benefits both parties. Uh, and again, this is where the sum is oftentimes greater than the whole. So the experience that you're providing to your customer is greater if they're able to have a beer and then go out and get something to eat at the food truck than it would be individually. Um, these are fairly easy to enter into, which is why you see them very often. And again, these are non-competitive businesses that are partnering with each other to provide a collective service that they would not be able to do uh, on their own. In this case, maybe the brewery doesn't have a kitchen, 
or they just don't want to get into all the um, nuances and operational uh, things that it takes to start a kitchen, uh, or they just don't have the infrastructure in place. Uh, and the food truck obviously isn't capable of selling beer, and they have a, a access to a, um, a large consumer base that are at the brew pub. Um, <clears throat> another really good one is a bookstore coffee shop. Uh, and this is um, Collected Works and Iconic Coffee Roasters here in Santa Fe. Uh, and so again, by having the coffee shop inside the bookstore, uh, you're offering a better experience to your customers. Uh, you're enticing them to come in and either drink coffee and get a book or get a book and drink some coffee. Whatever it is that attracts them to go in there in the first place, they will most likely partake of the other thing while they're there too. Um, so again, you're providing a service that is greater than the sum of its parts. Uh, here's another uh, example here in Santa Fe, and this is a co-working space uh, that is housed collaboratively in the same building with a yoga studio. Uh, and at the very top of the screen, which is cut off a little bit, is another iconic coffee um, shop. So uh, this is, you can get in there and you can do all the things you would want to do uh, in one space. So you can go to your co-working space and get some work done. If you need some coffee or you want to get some lunch, you can go to uh, Iconic Coffee. Uh, if you want to work out, you can go to Yoga Source and it's all right within the same hallway from each other. Um, so you can get a lot of stuff done at once. And again, you're enticing the person who maybe is only there for yoga but would be interested in a uh, co-working space uh, or who's getting coffee but might need to get some work done or wants to have a private office somewhere. Uh, so you're providing this collected service to people um, in, again, greater than the sum of its parts. The service and the value that you're providing to your customers greater than it could be if you were trying to do it all on your own. Uh, strategic alliances, again, these bundled products are very popular now during the um, pandemic during the crisis when you may not have your brick and mortar storefront available, but possibly there's an essential business on the block that could help you in selling your product. Um, so restaurants or local grocers are selling gift certificates from other local merchants. Um, you can combine takeout orders uh, to include products from other retailers. Um, there's narrow touch points now, meaning that uh, when people leave their homes, there's only so many places that they can go. Uh, so you can use that to your advantage by um, bundling all the information that you would want an individual to know all in one place. Uh, so if you had a, a flyer for like a virtual webinar or event that was coming up, uh, you could have that, give it to your grocers or give it to your restaurants that are offering takeout. Um, to include it in their uh, to-go container, in their bag, so that everybody know, will know about it. You can have a much greater, um, you have a much greater capacity to get your message out to a wider audience because that audience are only stopping in a few places. So the business mix, again, now uh, in this time of uh, crisis is a great time to examine your business mix and look at the companies that are in your geographic area, in your downtown, in your Main Street district, and look at what establishments can be working together and combining forces for the greater good to benefit both of them uh, in the long run. Um, so also think about what do you need in order to round out demand? If you have a lot of food trucks, um, Maybe there's one place where they all can congregate, uh, so you can so they somebody only has to go to one spot in order to find the food that they want. Or if you have a brewery in town, maybe you can uh, entice people to start food trucks because they have uh, ready-made demand uh, in that brewery location. Um, or if you have storefronts that are considered um, that are opened that are considered essential, uh, you can connect them with other businesses that are considered non-essential and sell uh, gift certificates or um, gift cards or sell products themselves through the uh, delivery mechanism that the restaurant uh, or the grocery store has. Um, so as, a, as economic developers, as Main Street leaders, we can look at ways 
where we can make these introductions to facilitate connections and increase the partnerships and increase the value that's provided to customers within the Main Street District or whatever, whatever other geographic area you're working in. So now we'll talk a little bit about coopetition, um, which is maybe the one that, that people are not as familiar with. Um, and coopetition is the collaboration between business competitors uh, in the hope of a mutually beneficial result. Um, so people that you wouldn't expect to be working together, doing so so that they can achieve something that they would not be able to achieve by themselves. Uh, and there's a few examples um, that are mostly from uh, larger companies or larger industries. And we'll just whip through these fairly quickly. Um, the one is the casino industry. Uh, and this is a picture of Atlantic City. Uh, and this was uh, an article from a few months ago that um, a couple of Atlantic City casinos in one area of the boardwalk um, are trying to promote and kind of rebrand that area of the city uh, that's been hardest hit by the by the downturn in Atlantic City. Um, and so they're marketing it as a new place called North Beach, uh, which is an entertainment district kind of set apart from the rest of the boardwalk and the rest of the town of Atlantic City. But in order to do that, these casinos who would normally be competitors had to uh, come together and form a partnership and alliance in order to brand and promote uh, this area of Atlantic City. Uh, another one that we're probably all familiar with, especially flying out of Albuquerque or Santa Fe, uh, are these One World or Star Alliance networks of uh, planes. Um, so airlines, they partner with one another in order to create these networks to increase capabilities for passengers so that you can buy a um, American Airlines ticket, uh, but you may fly a different um, carrier uh, from a smaller town to a larger hub. Uh, and then pick up the an actual American Airlines flight from that larger hub to your final destination. Uh, and this happens a lot in international flights where you may take uh, an American Airlines flight to a hub and then a different flight from that hub to uh, a city in Europe or South America. Um, and while the airlines are, are uh, fiercely competitive with one another, they create these networks because alone they wouldn't be able to provide that large a network or that um, that much capability and service uh, for its passengers. Now, some examples that uh, we can think about as being more applicable to, to Main Street businesses um, would be restaurants, right? Uh, think about uh, restaurants who would normally be competing with food trucks or be competing with other restaurants coming together to provide storage for food trucks. Uh, who may not have the, they don't have a license in order to store their product in a in a, a licensed restaurant or licensed food storage area. So they could provide storage and prep space uh, in return for that restaurant giving the food truck a signature item to sell on their behalf. And there would be a, that would be branded and obviously the, the money would flow to the restaurant for the sales of that one item. Uh, and they could also pay some rent, um, but Banding together, um, they could also promote uh, a certain dining district, like what we saw in Atlantic City, or a regional type of food. If there is one thing uh, that your region is known for specifically, um, to say, hey, come here, all the restaurants are going to be selling this, so there's all variations on this one thing. Um, also, there's an opportunity to share slack inventory that maybe a lot of restaurants are carrying because they're not seeing the level of customers that they are accustomed to especially going into the summertime. And so you could work together to create a corner store model uh, where you can, you can unload some excess inventory like flour, or eggs, uh, and a more direct to consumer model. Um, you could maybe see this in uh, per the personal care industry or personal care companies where they are developing an alliance of barbers and hairdressers in a, in a certain uh, geographic area in a certain district. And they sell prepaid universal gift cards uh, or they have a mailing list, they combine their mailing list together to send out information on, you know, how to give yourself a quick trim at home um, or what what not to do when you're trying to cut somebody's hair so they don't look foolish when they're on a, a webinar. 
Uh, and another one could be uh, at the outdoor industry. Um, there is uh, a lot of talk in New Mexico about uh, expanding and supporting the outdoor recreation industry. Uh, and so you could look at it if, if you're in an area that has a lot of outdoor recreational opportunities or possibilities and has an industry cluster there, um, look at them combine together to promote local trails and out the outdoor resources that are there. Uh, even doing online videos of walking trails or um, of mapping or, or a collage of old pictures that were taken during really, really beautiful or scenic areas um, in, this, uh, in this district. Um, you know, look at the flowers and identify what flowers are going to be on your hike uh, or what rocks and fossils might be along the trail for, uh, for people to keep an eye out for when they, when they go to visit or when they go out on this hike. Um, and then maybe create one central area. Everyone could come together and chip in a little bit to create a web page where there's a central area where customers can reserve services. So if you want to go for a kayaking trip or a whitewater rafting trip or a guided hike, you can do it all in this one, uh, one online location. And then here's, uh, so here's a list of resources that, um, that were brought up during this, uh, this section of the talk. Um, there's information on cooperatives. Uh, Strategizer is um, Osterwalder's website that has a lot of information on the business model canvas and uh, ways to use it. And then the entrepreneur.com article is the one where we got the um, increasing revenues for businesses that uh, engage in partnerships. Uh, and with that, I want to thank you for your time, and I will pass it on to my colleague, Michelle, uh, to continue with the rest of the presentation. Thanks, Sean. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michelle Negretti, and I'm a revitalization specialist with the New Mexico Main Street Program. And my focus is on the creative economy and cultural planning. Today, I want to share with you some opportunities to leverage key partnerships through virtual experiences. And many of our Main Street communities have responded to some of our surveys asking for assistance in finding ways for non-essential businesses to provide goods and services during our stay-at-home orders. Providing virtual experiences is one way to do that. For the purpose of this presentation, virtual experiences can be both online digital experiences and experiences done in the home environment that would have been experienced in the physical space outside of the home. Virtual experiences can include podcasts to videos, audio streaming to project kits to interactive video meetups. Why should businesses look to develop virtual experiences? Virtual experiences provide opportunities for non-essential businesses to engage clients with, while adhering to current social distancing guidelines. The development of virtual experiences also has the potential to reach new markets. Forbes reports that retailers selling non-essential goods are seeing double and triple digit increases in online sales during the COVID-19 crisis. Many of this is in the area of home goods, athletics, and loungewear. The New York Post reports that in a study of 2,000 people with access to a streaming device are streaming eight hours of content per day. And Spotify is reporting that there is an increase in self-improvement podcasts, wellness, meditation, cooking, children's content, and developing collaborative playlists. Americans are looking for free alternatives for new content. Ad-supported streaming devices such as YouTube are vi frequently visited. And while some essential businesses such as grocery stores are seeing high level of demand, others, including restaurants, may be struggling to attract customers. Partnerships with businesses with lower demand may help expand their markets and keep things new and interesting for existing patrons. These factors make the current health crisis an opportune time to develop key partnership strategies for developing virtual experiences. When developing partnerships for virtual experiences, it's important to look for symbiotic opportunities. A strong partnership will be beneficial to both the essential and non-essential business. If you're a non-essential business looking for a potential partner, think about what potential your business has to contribute to the alliance, bringing new clients, expanding services the essential business can offer, featuring new products sold by the essential businesses. Also, consider what you might need from the partnership. 
goods, business visibility and marketing, distribution, and how you can make that easy on your new partner. Some essential businesses are often stretched, working to meet increased demands with less staff and hours. Other essential businesses may be struggling to get new clients and may be looking for a partnership opportunity to broaden marketing reach and keep things fresh for new clients. One way to approach key partnerships is through value add. This includes looking for ways to build off of or increase an essential business's offering. Restaurants can include a streaming special with meal delivery or pickup. Streams can be performance art, interactive video, or an activity such as a trivia, as trivia or a lesson. A brewery can feature musicians through live music streams, opportunity for a musician to perform, patrons to hear live music, and a nominal increase in growler costs can support musicians who typically play. Farmers markets, which typically fe feature artisans, can provide links to featured artists showcasing work or offering a craft or activity. This can be taken further with craft or activity that includes items that are purchased at the market. A portion of the material sales could be given to the artist. Local pharmacies can partner with wellness consultants who could offer a free consultation with prescription pickup to increase video client base. And restaurants and CSA can produce family meal kits that include activities for children. Partners can include local artists, libraries, teachers, county extension programs, colleges, universities, and nonprofit organizations who develop activities featuring local products. Another method for partnership is through cross promotion. Non essential businesses can develop service feature products found in essential businesses. And essential businesses can market these services online or in grocery stores, pharmacies, etc. This concept works particularly well if the essential business promotes the partnership as supporting local service businesses. There are many ideas for how to cross promote. One example is a beauty boot camp where a beautician or a hairdresser develops a training video or webinar on how to do a manicure, facials, etc. at home. They can provide a beauty box that is sold through a local grocery store or pharmacy or they can feature farmer's market produce or grocery store items. The boot camp can be promoted directly to salon clients via email and in the physical location for the essential business, as in a farmer's market or in a grocery store. In the next few slides, I wanna share some examples of pairings that could easily be translating to virtual experiences by building key partnerships. So this is an example of pairing yoga with beer or wine. This is actually a thing. One of the above examples is Pints and Planks at Turtle Mountain Brewery featuring Yoga Zo in Rio Rancho. The, con the concept invites guests to grab a pint before or after the yoga class held in a private room of the brewery. This concept can be adjusted for stay at home and social distancing guidelines by developing a partnership with the brewery and one or two logo local yoga or fitness studios to offer a free yoga class with a growler pickup. The yoga class can be offered as a free first time offer to reach new clients, or could be sold as a nominal markup on a growler to support a local business. Classes can be streamed live to create opportunities for community and live engagement. This is an example of a business paintings with a twist. They have branches nationwide and in Albuquerque. They typically host um, an artist-led class and sell wine. With the pandemic, they are not offering Facebook Live classes and curbside pickup of, of activity kits. Distribution in New Mexico could happen through partnerships with local breweries and wineries. Customers can pick, purchase the virtual painting experience featuring local beer and wine. Materials and instruction can be picked up with the beer and wine purchase. Another example is streaming of live music and film. Many restaurants, breweries, and wineries feature, feature local musicians. These entities can feature local musicians who typically perform live in their establishments or reach out to other performers to offer live performances in conjunction with their beer or alcohol purchase. Brewery patrons can watch their favorite musician or see a live performance via video streaming.
On the left is an example from Olive and June, an LA nail salon who has adapted to the stay at home requirements by offering a mani boot camp. They offer a week long instruction on manicures and nail art with the purchase of a studio box featuring tools and products used in the live stream boot camp. On the right is a, uh, an example called Body Works in New York, which typically offers massage and physical therapy. They have refocused to provide video and one on one video visits due to the stay at home requirements. Cross promotion by featured products available at essential businesses or by providing services as value add to an essential business current menu could be a way to increase client base for both businesses, as well as provide opportunities for service businesses to reach clients. Another opportunity for partnership includes meal preparation. As we all are now preparing more meals at home, people are looking for variety and opportunity to pick up new skills and to connect socially. The example on the left is a video prepared by Chef Corey Barrett, the winner of the 2019 Food Network Baking Championship, who is offering cooking instruction videos for people cooking at home during the current pandemic. And on the right is an example of a recent pickup menu from Frenchish in Albuquerque, featuring a dinner for two meal kit with instructions and ingredients for pickup. Many opportunities exist for partnership around food. Local chefs can provide meal preparation and instruction featuring food from a local grocery store and farmer's market. Farmer's markets can work with local restaurants to provide video links on how to cut, prepare, and store produce. And of course, there's limited opportunities to engage youth. Restaurants can work with artists to develop activities for kids to do. This might feature food restaurants can provide and be added items and artists can add items to provide activities or to provide uh, teaching classes for kids to learn how to do meal prep or activities to keep them busy for a stay at home date night. Local chefs and county extension programs can develop cooking classes for kids and feature foods from these essential businesses. So now let's talk about some of the virtual delivery options. Most of us are familiar with websites many websites or many businesses have their own websites and those that don't should quickly get their business online. Last week, Robin and Amy went into the importance of this for businesses during the pandemic. Robin covered many of the features of Facebook for showcasing and selling. A few more websites that can be used to deliver products and services include Alignable, which is a small business network, Nextdoor, which now is offering ways to recommend and promote local businesses, Mind Body, an extensive network for health and wellness, and Patreon, which is a platform for artists. These web-based sites offer different tools for connecting to audiences, and some include options for payment for services. Another opportunity is featuring products on a partner's website or app. Many businesses such as restaurants and CSAs already have a website or an app that allows customers to select items off a menu. Other um, online services can be added to that menu and uh, customers can click those and pick up with their purchases. Live streaming is another opportunity for providing live and recorded virtual experiences. Robin mentioned Facebook Live in last week's webinar. Another, other video streaming platforms that are commonly utilized include YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Derb is a streaming platform out of Santa Fe, focusing on kids programming and independent filmmakers. Patreon, brown paper tickets, Eventbrite, and MindBody offer methods for ticketing and online purchasing streaming events. Podcasting is another way to deliver services virtually. This can be done by collaborating with existing local podcasters to feature businesses and products or talk about a business history or by creating new podcasts specifically designed to feature music, stories, activities, etc. We've provided on this slide a link to more information on how to determine what podcasting method might be best for you. QR codes are another easy method for um, delivery. 
They're easy to, um, they're free and easy to develop. These can be scanned by smartphones, linking directly to a website, a video, downloading a PDF, or even a payment site. QR codes can be printed on labels, business cards, receipts, etc., offering quick and easy access to a virtual experience. And finally, apps are another way to provide virtual access. They can be developed to provide a user with a tailored experience and make experiences accessible with a touch of a button. More complex apps can incorporate aug augmented reality and virtual reality to provide users with a more physical experience. So we wanted to also include uh, a few payment methods and strategies for virtual experiences. Um, and we've kind of listed here the different percentages and costs for some of these. And finally, I want to go over some quick implementation strategies um, for local Main Street essential businesses and non-essential businesses. Um, so how can partnerships be built for virtual experiences? Local Main Street programs can identify businesses in their downtown community which have the potential to form partnerships to create virtual experiences and connect them to revitalization specialists and each other. Essential businesses can determine where the gaps are in areas of products or services offered, products that may not be selling, or opportunities to expand into new markets, and actively seek out non-essential business partners. And non-essential businesses can look for opportunities to collaborate with essential businesses that have similar market base, and by developing easy packages of goods and services that are easy to market and distribute. If you'd like to learn okay, more, great. please contact one of our revitalization specialists. And thank you very much. Thank you so much, Michelle and Sean. If anyone has any questions, please type them in. I have one already from Ralph Lopez. We have an app in Santa Fe named City Swivel that is already partnering with local businesses. Check us out at www.insightcityswivel.com. Thank you, Ralph. Not seeing any other questions. If you do have questions in the future, feel free to email us at info at nmmainstreet.org. Again, I'll be sending you an email with this recording and presentation. You can also visit us online and visit our social media channels as well. And I think that might be it. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.